to our presentation um, that's in the chat right now. Um, I think uh, you can only see the chats that start from after you enter, right? So I have uh, posted it a couple of times, but the most recent, hopefully everyone can, can access the most recent post in the chat. I'll probably post it again in a, in a minute. Okay. okay, looks like we're recording. Okay, all right. So, konnichiwa. Good morning. I am Minako Kamimura and I teach Japanese at Rancho Sanwan High School. And konnichiwa. Uh, my name is Erica Hashiba and I teach Japanese at Everett Alvarez High School. So welcome, welcome. This presentation is titled Inspiring 21st Century Global Citizens in the World Language Classroom. So first of all, please sign in and um, the green bit.ly link, it's uh, case sensitive. So Kamimura with a capital K, sign in S and I are all capital. And then the link to our presentation is right under that if you would like to follow us that way throughout the presentation. And don't worry, our presentation is not in Japanese. We'll be speaking in English today. And uh, some of you may know already that the Japanese program here in our district has quite a long history. In fact, it started back in 1986. But of course, it has continually evolved since then. And today we'll be talking about how in recent years, our curriculum has been moving towards a content-based instruction where students learn language, not just for the sake of learning the language, but in service of gaining new knowledge in content areas. So this means we're talking about important social issues such as climate change, child poverty, physical and emotional health, consumerism, you name it. And in doing so, our hope is for our students to cultivate their social awareness and to inspire them to become agents of change in their community and beyond to become a true uh, 21st century global citizen. So um, to begin, this is our objective that participants will be able to understand how to incorporate the UN Sustainable Development Goals and the four domains of global competency into their curriculum to create an engaging and relevant learning activities for their students. We'll be sharing about one particular unit from our curriculum that will serve as an example of what we do in both inside and outside of the classroom in an effort to build a socially relevant and action-oriented curriculum. We will also briefly discuss how we switched gears to distance learning in the spring and share some examples of projects we did with our students that will hopefully inspire some ideas for you in the coming year. Um, if you have questions, um, please post them on the digital parking lot. Comments we welcome on the chat, but for questions, we invite you to go to the Padlet digital Oops. parking lot. And, and I will post the link in the chat as well right now. Thank you. Um, right now. So again, the digital parking lot is for questions. Um, comments? Oh, oh, yes, there it is. We welcome throughout uh, on the chat. Okay, and then at the end of the presentation, we will hopefully try to address your questions. So thank you for- Oh no, links are not working. Links are not working. Um, the digital parking lot? Uh, uh, is, it, is it all of the links? Hi, it's Megan. Tan. Hi. Yes. <laughs> um, it's me that made the note and um, it's the sign in and the, I wanted to follow along with the presentation. They're just showing up as regular, um, typing as opposed to a link that can be clicked on the they're not hmm. the digital parking lot looks like it's the right thing but i'm okay. trying to and i tried to copy and paste it into the toolbar too and i couldn't make that work either the sign in <laughs> yeah yes Ooh, okay let me try this one control c i'm sorry go 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 ahead i'll figure it out <laughs> i just didn't know if everyone else was having no that thank you for bringing that up um <laughs> that's strange though isn't it it does seem like some people are able to Get it to work. I wonder That's what it is. Super again. important. We want. Yeah, to yeah. Pay. Yeah. Thank you for letting us know. Um, by copying and pasting, I was able to get it open. So Great. that oh, really? one that you, awesome. That you just okay. did. I copied and pasted, and that worked. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. So you. that that's for everybody. If you can uh, copy and paste. Um, Could you possibly but, do that for the presentation as well? Uh, the change oh. the link. Yes, we will. Yeah, we'll make sure. Or just we, post it yeah. in the chat separately, and then I think that'll work. I can copy and paste again. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so do I just need to paste the uh, 
the link again? Like, yeah, I believe so. Are the are these the ones that will work for everyone if you copy and paste it? Okay, Julie says yes. Yes, paint the leads link into the yeah, Maggie said yes as well. Okay. Great. I'm gonna mute now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And yeah, hi, Megan. Important. Thanks for being Thank here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, a first quick overview of our program. Um, all five high schools in our district offer Japanese, and um, enrollment has been on a constant rise, um, which of course has led to an increase in the number of teachers. Uh, we currently have over 800 students in Japanese classes across the district, seven teachers and one assistant teacher. Um, for the five high schools. Our program is a four-year curriculum, including AP level. And all of the eight Japanese teachers, we come together weekly to collaborate for several hours. We meet after school, and we also regularly attend professional development opportunities for the district, uh, region, state, and national as well. Um, in fact, all seven of us are presenting at this uh, teacher prep this year. Um, John Hattie, the author of Visible Learning book, uh, has conducted uh, numerous research on what matters most in raising student achievement. And he showed that teacher collective efficacy has one of the biggest impact on student learning. Um, we would like to think that this is one of our program's greatest strengths and is resulting in both program growth and student success. So I know you're all wondering what in the world are we discussing when we meet for several hours every week, right, during our collaboration. Uh, well, about three years ago, um, we began the process of revamping our curriculum to incorporate some important social issues, as Minako mentioned, um, and articulated here as a United, uh, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, they're also known as the SDGs. And of course, they're some of the most important pressing issues of our time. Uh, you can see goals like zero hunger, uh, gender equality, um, climate action, uh, etc. And for the world language classroom, this means that the language is not the goal anymore, but these, um, the SDGs are the goals. In other words, it's not, um, let's learn the present progressive verbs today, or, you know, how do we conjugate adjectives? But uh, now we're saying we need to talk about climate action. Right? So what's the language we need to learn to be able to do that? Uh, these goals give us our curriculum the purpose and the language is simply, uh, it just follows as a means to that end. Uh, it's a major shift in how we view language education and it can absolutely be applied to other subject areas as well. Uh, for example, let's take uh, SDG number seven, affordable and clean energy, right? We can ask the question, what math do we need to learn? or what science or even history, right, do we need to learn to understand this topic? And uh, these goals are very complex. Uh, they're sometimes uh, sensitive or even controversial, and that could be really intimidating for us teachers, right? Um, it's, it's just not possible for us to be conscious of all these issues. You know, I'm not an environmental scientist, I'm not a human rights activist, um, but what I can do is do some homework and learn about these issues. And so the key to diving into this, um, into these SDGs, is that we kind of have to become okay with not being the expert anymore and, and kind of letting go of some authority and having the mindset of inquiring with the students um, and just learning with the students, I think, or else we'll never do it. We'll never want to dive in. Um, and we've taken the dive and can tell you that it really has dramatically increased student interest and engagement in our career. Uh, another framework that we've worked with in recent years um, that complements our focus on the SDGs are these four domains of global competency presented by the Asia Society. And many of you may already be familiar uh, with this framework since it has been adopted by curricula across various disciplines. Uh, the four domains of global competence are investigate the world, recognize perspectives, communicate ideas, and finally take action. So in a nutshell, uh, this is perhaps how we can look at our approach. The SDGs tell us the what and the global competency framework shows us the how. Uh, we can inspire our students to become 21st century global citizens. So that sounds all 
fine and dandy, but what does it actually look like in action, right, in curriculum? So here is our curriculum map. Uh, it shows the unit topics that we cover um, at each level. You'll see uh, level one, two, three, and four. Those are our four years of the Japanese program with the fourth year being AP level. And as we mentioned earlier, it was about three years ago that we started thinking about how we can revamp our curriculum so that each of these topics um, can also be an opportunity to address an SDG or um, an important social issue. So you'll see the title of the unit uh, at the top of each section, each um, cell next to the unit number. Um, and then you'll see the infused social issue is in parentheses below, uh, yeah, below the unit title. So for example, uh, in the second year of Japanese, we have always done a fashion unit. And this is where students learned about, um, you know, how to say the clothes they wear and how to describe them, fun, fun, and like maybe end with a, with a fashion show, right? Um, it was great, but now, under the revamped curriculum, uh, we go one step further and we also address the issue of consumerism. Um, so that means we are now talking about like fast fashion, right? And what is it? Um, these are brands like Gap and H&M, right? And uh, the controversies that surround fast fashion um, because it has uh, an Im immense uh, effect on, uh, negative effect on the laborers and the environment. So we also talk about these issues uh, in the fashion unit now. The important thing to know is that incorporating the SDG topics into our curriculum was not a process of scrapping our old curriculum and then reinventing the wheel. That would have been a very stressful, <laughs> monumental task, right? Um, but we simply, we, we kept the curriculum that we've always had, but we just simply located the units where certain SDGs would be com complementary. So 10 years ago, we, all, we had a fashion unit um, and we still teach fashion, but it's just now with a new twist. So in this revamping, um, this process of revamping um, into our curriculum, some brand new units were also created. And so the Journey to America unit in the level four AP, uh, the, the fourth year AP level. Um, this is actually one of those brand new units that we actually created um, in the last several years. And in this unit, um, students learned about Japanese immigration to America, as well as specifically to Salinas. So we also cover some local history. Um, and they learned about the hardships as well as the injustices, the challenges that Japanese immigrants faced uh, when they came to America. Um, students are able to see the parallels between the Japanese American experience uh, as well as those of other immigrants and perhaps uh, even including their own families' experiences as well. So today, we'll be talking more in detail about what we did uh, both in and also beyond the classroom uh, for this unit um, to address the sustainable development goal of peace and justice. This was the SDG that we infused into this unit, um, as well as also to build the students' global competency through social action. So this slide shows some of the various assessment tasks from the Journey to America unit. Uh, these tasks were, as Erica said, designed so that students would build both the linguistic proficiency and global competence for the purpose of deepening their knowledge about the Peace and Justice SDG. Um, so the domains and assessment tasks correspond in color. For example, on the top uh, row, investigate the world, um, the interpretive modes correspond. And here students identified Japanese immigrant experiences in Salinas for the past hundred years through reading, viewing various articles, infographics, and videos. And for the interpersonal mode, the green row, um, it addresses communicate ideas domain. So here students shared their family stories in small groups. And for the presentational tasks, um, the recognized perspective in light orange, uh, we had students uh, present original poetry that showed their understanding of the historical events that affected the Japanese Americans, as well as take action domain. Uh, this is where students published our family stories, a collection of family stories in Japanese to share their family's immigration stories. And here, students created a product that was meant not just for their classmates, but for a wider uh, audience, to, for the public. And then, um, this is 
um, sorry, the Japanese teachers, we collaborate and we create our own teaching materials um, that is rich in content, rich in authentic materials. Um, this image is a screenshot of the title page for the Journey to America unit lesson two. And on top, you can see the essential question. Um, this is the question, uh, what does it mean to be an immigrant in a new country? We want our students to continue to think about that throughout the whole unit. And uh, I'll show you a glimpse of our handout. Um, so usually we print it out and hand it to the students in class, they write it in. Um, but when we switched to distance learning, we um, added a few more um, points to that to make it more uh, online accessible. And so we color coded different um, tasks. For example, um, the white box under question two and three, uh, that, that is where we wanted our students to fill in by typing. Um, and then we also added links, direct links to uh, authentic videos. Uh, Sometimes we would have Loom videos that it, uh, was like instructional video for specific tasks um, so that students could complete this worksheet, online uh, digital worksheet. Um, this was for review purpose and we gave them about a week to uh, fill out certain portions. Um, they submitted through Google Classroom and teachers could give them individual feedback. Okay, so as Minako mentioned, um, as one of the assessments for this unit, in fact, for the final assessment at the end, uh, students wrote about their own family stories on how they came to Salinas. So here's an example of one student's story created on a website called storyjumper.com. This is a great website and recommend it um, if you have not come across it before. Um, this student talks about her and her family's immigration uh, to the United States from the Philippines and much of the vocabulary that was used when she learned about the Japanese American immigration uh, is the same vocabulary she's able to use to describe her own family's story. Uh, words like searching for work, right? Obtaining citizenship um, and enduring prejudice. Um, so the students, uh, when they're writing their own story, they're able to make the connection that we may all come from different places, but we do share a similar story with similar uh, challenges that can all be communicated with um, similar language. Uh, this is, a, again, super easy to use a website that actually gives you the option to publish a book at the end, if you would like, with a cost. Um, we did not publish um, into an actual book, but we kept it online. Um, basically, you can generate a link and you can share with anybody, right? And so when you, when you access the story with the link, it opens up on your computer, like a digital book, and you can like flip through just like the video right now showed you. Um, so my students um, posted their online version of, this, of their stories on a class blog. And then we were able to then share it out with people. We even um, shared it with some teachers and students in Japan. So that's what we did. Um, Yoazama, our district lead coach, who uh, taught this unit several years ago in his pre-coaching times, uh, decided he would actually publish his stories, his students' stories, in the form of a book. Um, so he did it through a self-publishing service on Amazon called Create Space. I personally have not tried this um, before, but really awesome. You don't need to pay anything upfront, and the book is made to order. Um, so only what's ordered is printed and does it cost a lot no i mean you can see here from the screen i hope you can see um it costs 11 dollars to purchase this book right and that's totally affordable um so just like imagine right how exciting would it be as a high schooler to be able to say that they've been published right in a book um it's available on amazon and it's got five stars <laughs> right that's pretty exciting um, so other than the precious uh, memento, obviously, it can maybe possibly serve as, you know, a piece in an academic or um, professional portfolio in the future. Who knows? Um, and of course, uh, the most important thing here is that is the fact that the students didn't just keep their stories to themselves, just to each other within the classroom walls, but they took the step to share it with their community and in this case, the world, right? the World Wide Web. <laughs> So speaking of uh, con connecting with community, um, we'd like to share now about some of the things we did outside of our immediate classroom as part of this unit. 
Uh, I'm sure many of you have had guest speakers in your classes. Um, they are the absolute best, right? We can sit back and relax and it's super exciting for the students to hear from somebody that's not you. Um, and particularly in history, uh, there's just really no better way to learn than to hear from somebody who, who's actually lived through it, right? So um, if we have some history teachers here, uh, you may already know Mr. Mas Hashimoto. He's a former president of the Japanese American Citizens League Watsonville chapter. Uh, he is also um, a longtime former, a longtime uh, history teacher at Watsonville High. Uh, he's a bit of a local celebrity and gets invited to schools and universities all over the area to speak about his experience uh, growing up in an internment camp. So when I invited him to Everett Alvarez, um, I also reached out to the history teachers um, at my school to hear his talk. Um, and this became a cross-curricular event uh, with about 150 students in attendance uh, in the Little Theater. Uh, I think we should keep in mind that inviting guest speakers to our classes is actually an option that we still have under distance learning, right? In fact, in some ways, it's probably easier now um, precisely because we are online. Um, and maybe you can even connect with people in, you know, different parts of the country or even the world. Like for us, you know, we can connect with people in Japan without flying them over all the way to Salinas. So that is an exciting potential. Um, so this event um, consisted of not only Moss's presentation, but also my students' presentation of, uh, if you recall, the Japanese poetry they wrote as part of this unit. And since our audience members were mostly English speakers, um, the students recited their poetry bilingually in English and Japanese. And this is one student's example of a haiku she wrote on the topic of internment. And as, you, as many of you know, I'm sure, um, haiku is five, seven, five syllables, first line, five syllables, seven syllables for second and third. Um, you'll see the syllables are 575 in the Japanese version. Uh, the English is simply a translation of it, so the English is not 575. Um, but I'll read it out loud so you can hear it. Uh, the Japanese haiku reads, Kago no tori, atarashi ie, tsumetai yo. And the translation is, caged bird, new home, it is cold. So for each student, a slide like this uh, with their poetry in both Japanese and in English, along with an image, um, was uh, projected behind them as each of them recited their piece. Uh, and after the performance, uh, Moss came up to me and said, that was the most moving thing I'd ever seen. And it, it brought me to tears. And you know, obviously that meant so much for us. Like, oh my God, we made Moss cry, <laughs> right? Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind um, that when we have guest speakers, um, it's typical for us to simply become the audience, um, but we can also ask our guest speaker to be an audience for our students, right? To have a real life audience, an authentic audience, instead of just simply hanging the poetry on the classroom wall and making the classroom pretty with their projects, right? Instead of that, but to have a real audience, again, um, is just so much more meaningful and it turns what would just be a school project into actually action that impacts the community. So as we plan for a year ahead, um, we'll be thinking about ways we can continue to have these kinds of opportunities, even in distance learning. Um, the logistics can be tricky to figure out, but you know, I think poetry slams, um, speech contests, and, and like maybe debates um, are all things I think that can still be done on an online platform. Um, and it's such an important and much needed opportunity to build community. Um, and in fact, later actually in our presentation, we will introduce um, an end of the year celebration event that we held last May uh, using YouTube Premiere. Okay, so um, having members of the JACL like Mas Hashimoto was very exciting for um, our students. And this began an important relationship with community members throughout this unit of um, Journey to America. Um, the members of the Salinas Valley, JACL, they visit the San Jose Japanese American Museum um, every year. So we asked if our students could join them uh, to further what they've been learning in the classroom. We held a joint field trip with um, over 30 students, 15 JACL members, and seven Japanese teachers on a Saturday morning. We carpooled uh, school vans and we went 
And at the museum, our students were able to further deepen their understanding of the Journey to America unit. And this became the beginning of a continued relationship with the Salinas Valley JACL that has since opened up many more doors of opportunity and collaboration with them as they have become a major supporter of our program. So can you think of a community organization that you could partner with into your content to enhance student learning? And of course, we can talk about uh, global competency without connecting to the world. Um, how many of you have traveled to um, different country with students? And we know that many of you do that and thank you for doing that. And we maybe also take chat if you can share. Yeah. That would be great to see some of the places maybe if mm -hmm. you've done trips, even with, within like domestically. We'd love to hear some. Yes. Um, so we take students every two years to Japan and uh, we want to always have a theme or purpose um, beyond tourism when we do our Japan trips. And since peace and justice was the important issue that our students were learning about that year, we wanted the 2018 Japan trip to reflect that purpose and be sort of an extension to that unit. Uh, we traveled to Tokyo first briefly and then went to Okinawa, where students visited important historical landmarks and learned about what happened during World War II from the Okinawan perspective. Um, Okinawa is the only place in Japan where battle was fought uh, between Japanese and American soldiers on ground. Many areas um, had the aerial bombing and you know there were it was very difficult for other areas too but in Okinawa only did soldiers fight hand to hand face to face. So there are many memorials that commemorate this tragic history. So our students visited the Peace Memorial Park and conducted a peace ceremony, which is a ceremony where uh, students pledge to always fight for peace and justice in their community and the world. Um, in preparation for the ceremony, we folded 1,000 cranes, uh, which is a symbol of peace and wishing for happiness and wellness. We gifted it to the Peace Memorial Hall. We also performed the song uh, Imagine by John Lennon in both Japanese and English as part of our peace pledge at the ceremony. And after the ceremony, the staff there came up and told us that you know, they have many Japanese school students come and do peace ceremony, but our group was the very first American students, American group to do so. And we were so excited to hear this. So through this Japan trip, we addressed um, all four domains of the global competency. Um, in Okinawa, students investigated the world through first-hand experience of seeing historical sites and hearing stories um, related to World War II from the Okinawan perspective. This enabled them to recognize various perspectives that they may not have known before. Then students communicated their commitment to peace through planning the very first peace ceremony by American students. And uh, they took action by uh, conducting the peace ceremony and using pledging for peace uh, and using Japanese and English. So again, it is so important for our travel abroad with students to have a purpose beyond tourism and the good food. You know, um, those are important, but to, we want to really make an impact in the community that we are visiting as well as the home community when we return. Um, we'd like to show you just a one minute clip from the Japan trip highlight video. So here it is. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward it to this is um, the peace ceremony. Yeah. You you sit there and you look over now and you're like, oh, this has always been peaceful. I felt like I could feel some of what they were feeling during the war, what was happening to them. And so during the peace ceremony, I just like was flooded with an emotion I can't put my finger on. And no village am true.
世界中にいるのさ今自分ポゼッション I wonder あたまの上にはそう、I know you want to see the rest of the video now, right?、Uh, if you would like to see the other amazing five minutes of this video that you didn't get to see just now,、um, please go ahead and access it through our presentation link.、Um, and you can、um, please, by all means, please、uh, watch it on your own time. I promise it'll be worth, your, worth five minutes of your time. Um, so, you may recognize some your former students. Yes, absolutely.、Um, these are students from. Alvarez and Salinas High, spring of 2018. So, usually, when you return from a trip, that's it, right? The trip is over and it almost feels like you're waking up from a dream. But we didn't want Okinawa to just be a dream.、Um, and so, once、uh, returning to Salinas,、uh, we wanted to have a concrete way、uh, for us to follow up on the pledge that we made at the peace ceremony. So, we decided that as part of our commitment,、uh, we would plant a peace pole.、Um, a peace pole is a simple white pole with the message, May peace prevail on earth in multiple languages.、Um, many of you have probably seen one before.、Um, there are thousands of peace poles all over the world, including、uh, UN headquarters,、um, Ground Zero at World Trade Center,、um, and I hear that there's even one at Hardin Middle School as well.、Um, So, even after, our trip,、uh, even after the trip concluded, we continued to meet with our students to discuss and plan this, this new project that, that was born out of the trip.、Um, the big question was where should the pole be planted, right? We wanted to have a central location、um, that would best reflect our intention to promote peace for an, our entire community.、Um, and we Uh, began to toss the idea around with our JACL contacts、um, because we felt that they would be、um, a strong ally in this project. And they were the ones that said, Hey, how about the city hall? And we thought, Wow, really? The city hall? I mean, that would be great. You know,、um, well,、uh, it doesn't hurt to try.、Um, so that actually started a, a months long process of、um, first, we, we met with our principals,、um, got their You know, their blessing on this project.、Um, and then we were connected through our JCL contact. We were connected with、um, our city council member, Steve McShane, who became a big support. He loved the idea、um, and became a big support of this project. And he was the one that then helped us move it forward to then the city, the city public arts commission, right?、Um, and they, were, they then voted on, on this project unanimously. It passed.、Um, and then finally, it went to the city council. Um, and it was approved,、um, the proposal was approved to have this peace pole planted at the Salina City Hall. It was a very long、um, process、um, involving a, the whole entire community, it felt like.、Um, and in the meantime,、um, we met with our students, we continued to meet with our students,、um, both students who went on the trip, but as well as、um, students who were.、Uh, Who newly came on board、um, to participate in this project.、Um, and we planned an unveiling ceremony、uh, to commemorate, commemorate the planting of the Peace Bowl. So, this is August 27, 2019. This is a, that would be the fall of last school year. We held a ceremony at the Salina City Hall to unveil the Peace Bowl. Uh, the council member,、uh, Steve McShane, who was a big supporter, he volunteered、um, to serve as the MC for our event.、Uh, and we were very honored to have him do that.、Uh, we had numerous other city council members, our late Mayor Joe Gunter,、uh, as well as students, alumni, friends, and family. They, we had a great、uh, group of、um, participants、uh, be part of our ceremony、um, to celebrate this moment. And just as we did at our ceremony in Okinawa, we sang the song Imagine、uh, in Japanese and in English. So it's kind of our version. <laughs> we we、uh, rewrote the lyrics so that they were,、uh, they were bilingual.、Uh, and it was followed by the pledge, Watashi tachi wa heiwa o chikaimasu, which means we pledge to peace. And we, ha we had everybody say it with us together in unison. So if you're ever by the city hall, 
I hope uh, you'll have a chance to stop by and see our pool. It's right outside uh, in the grassy area by the entrance. Uh, and our poll has a message, may peace prevail on earth in the eight most spoken languages in Salinas. I wonder if you know which ones they are. They are English, of course, Spanish, Tagalog, Japanese, Korean, Chinese, Vietnamese, and Arabic. We also added a, a plaque in Braille. We're just so proud um, to see this peace pool standing as our tangible evidence of how a lesson on peace and justice could extend beyond the classroom, even cross international borders and come back to our community as real life action. Um, and it just would not have been possible without uh, the incredible collaboration between um, the students and all the teachers that were involved. And of course, um, especially uh, the supportive community members. So here's a quote by uh, one student, Brianna Mendes. She's a Salinas High School graduate. She also went on the Japan trip and she says, as someone who went on the peace trip last year, commute home from college is such a meaningful reminder of our mission. Having a tangible product as a result of our experience and efforts is incredible. Um, another student, Mark. He did not go on the Japan trip, but uh, he was very active in the Peaceful Project. He said, this project felt like an extension of the Japanese class. We learned about the culture, then the issues, and finally the solutions. The project brought the entire lesson to real life right in front of us. So to wrap up the discussion of this particular unit, um, here's a great quote by Kofi Annan, former Secretary General of the United Nations. He said, education is quite simply put, peace building by another name. It is a most effective form of defense spending there is. Props <laughs> to Kofi Annan. Uh, we really enjoyed the different ways that our unit took off to address um, the Peace and Justice SDG. Um, we are also very much aware that some of the things we were able to do in our Journey to America unit, um, such as the field trips and, of course, like the peaceful ceremony, these are unfortunately things that we would no longer be able to do under social distancing measures. Uh, so now uh, we would like to share a little bit about um, what, uh, how the Japanese program, um, our curriculum and our focus shifted through distance learning in order to maintain our connection and also engagement with the students. Yes, um, so our original curriculum was put aside because it was clear that we could not just continue doing what we did in the classroom simply through online setting. So we came together um, asking ourselves, you know, how can we be innovative and think outside the box? Um, in this visual, Larry Farlazzo from Education Week discusses some tips for remote teaching that we found useful. For example, um, on the top left, number one, he says under distance learning, giving grades is not as important as giving feedback. Hmm, so that really made us think. And overall, we recognize the importance of keeping tasks, uh, instructions, and resources very simple and accessible, as well as giving students autonomy and choice in what they did. So this resulted in the inception of a district-wide impact project. Uh, we wanted to engage students in self-directed learning that was meaningful and impactful. So first we surveyed students um, asking what topics interest you related to Japan and the Japanese culture. And then um, was it, did they want to know more about the pop culture or more about history and arts? Um, and then we were surprised that many students said they want to learn more about the current topics of how COVID-19 is affecting people in Japan. So secondly, uh, we set up individual Google Meets with students to discuss um, their specific interest and um, brainstorm ideas of how that can turn into a project. Uh, we asked them, what kind of impact do you want to make? Do you want to inform people? Do you want it to be more self-growth? Or do you want to raise awareness of issues and topics? Uh, then we talked about what would be the best way to do that. Is it through creating a video, brochure, um, poster, website? Um, it was really up to them to decide what kind of impact they wanted to make and how they were going to do it. Our role as teacher was to be um, to provide guidance, point them to resources, and to be on the passenger seat while the students were on the driver's seat. 
um, for three weeks, teachers and students communicated through emails and lots of Google Meets to exchange ideas, give feedback, check on progress, reflect on the overall project experience. So as Larry Farlazzo mentioned earlier, you know, it is important that we give students choice and autonomy in their learning. So at the end, there were 238 projects from students across six schools. So five from our district, and we also had the students um, learning Japanese from Monterey High join this. There were hundreds of topics on limit, limitless creativity and expressions that demonstrated their learning and impact that students wanted to make. And many of the SDG goals were addressed through the topics students chose. For example, there were students who made posters and Google Slides to inform about COVID-19 in Japan, which would refer to SDG goal number three, good health and well-being. Um, some students researched endangered animals in Japan, which would point to SDG goal number 15, life on land. And while not learning in the classroom setting, students uh, successfully engaged in meaningful learning by investigating the world, learning new perspectives, communicating ideas, and taking action to show their learning. And all of these completed projects were published on a website for the whole public, for anyone to, to view. So we'd like to give you a peek. And this is the homepage of the IMPACT project. And we have some um, photos and quotes by students who participated. A little bit about the teachers and Erica will describe some of the uh, projects mentioned here. Um, but you can search by school what some of this, what many of our students created. So for example, if I go to Everett Alvarez tab, Some of the projects involved art, and again, this one Erica will talk about in a little in a little while. Um, some students wanted to do more cooking, Japanese food, um, writing a speech related to uh, family history. And this is a poster, Heroes of Tomorrow, and they are the essential workers. So a little bit of everything was covered um, in this impact project. So again, if you get a chance, please uh, take a look at our website that um, hosts all the projects that our students worked on. So uh, we'd like to share a couple examples of a collaborative um, impact project that became an opportunity for us to exercise some intense teamwork and also have a lot of fun um, by creating something together, even through um, distance. Um, so this is actually a music video um, that was created as a group. Um, and students and teachers from all five of our Salinas District High Schools, plus um, we even had, uh, we are connected to the Japanese teacher at Monterey High, so we invited them to participate as well. And so in the end, a total of 27 of us, um, teachers and students, uh, participated in this very short one minute music video. Um, the song is translated to, in English, it's called Dancing on the Inside. It sounds kind of funny, but uh, it's a song composed by singer. He's a really popular singer in Japan. His name is Gen Hoshino. And he created this song during the shelter in place order. And his intention was to share this song as a, copyright free piece of music that he wanted like anybody and everybody to take it and just kind of interpret it in their own way make their own version whether it was them singing it or maybe dancing to it um, playing an instrument to it so uh, we decided to hop on the bandwagon and um, create uh, our version as well and share it with our community and the world so um, we did also just not take the song, but we added our musical touches. We have several musicians in our, on our team. Um, you'll see, already see here on the left here, the, on the right, um, that is the singer, Gen Hoshino. So that's just a clip from his like original, uh, the, the original song that he posted on YouTube. But on the left, you have Cameron Chien from North, North Salinas High. He is singing for us in the in the video, along with also um, his co-teacher Hiroko Ikeda, 
Um, Courtney Rowe is also a singer in this song. Um, we also have some other teacher teachers with musical talents. Our very own Minako here, she is our in-house pianist. So you'll see her playing the piano. Um, Clayton Frederick, uh, he is on saxophone. Um, and of course, all the other teachers, um, all of us teachers are actually in it, but we have added our own musical twist to it as well. So take a look, it's just a one minute video. Oops, oops, sorry. Let me try that again. <laughs> so fun right it's just a really quick you know one minute video but there are 27 of us in it um, it was such a great way for us to feel like a team, you know, and having created something together, like even through distance. Um, and I think we often have students do projects individually or in pairs or even in groups, but how often do we create one single project, right, with the entire class or even in this case, entire district? Um, I could see how something similar could be done in other subjects as well. Um, maybe you could do a music video like this uh, with a song that's relevant to the content, but um, it could also be done with, say, like a single uh, single piece of poetry, right, being read by multiple students um, or doing like maybe a Shakespeare scene, right, with different students reading the different characters, something like that, just to get some ideas going. Yes, I'm seeing the um, in the chat. Yeah, it, I used uh, iMovie to edit the, the video and you can... Um, I think if, as long as you have like the most recent version within the last like couple of years, um, there's a option to do split screen. It's just, it's very easy. You just have to click on it um, and it'll allow you to have like two different scenes. But I, I don't know how you can have more than that. Um, I know on iMovie you can do split screen with two different scenes um, going simultaneously. Yeah, so that was a, that was a music video project. And I'd like to share one more a collaborative um, project that was an art project that I did uh, with my students um, as another uh, impact pro group impact project. So um, in this project we created uh, one single kanji character um, composed of 28 different parts. Um, these are actually 28 different uh, three by five cards and the kanji character here you'll see it in the center of the screen that is the kanji pronounced I which means love and so it may be hard to see, but that kanji is in the poster. <laughs> I hope you can see it. Um, so uh, the participants for this project were my um, current Japanese uh, students who volunteered to be part of the project, as well as um, I also reached out to former uh, students of mine as well um, that I was still in touch with. And then myself and Clayton Frederick, the two Japanese teachers, um, we all participated together. And this kanji too, we actually chose by majority vote. Um, I gave several, several options like, uh, you know, kanji for friendship and kanji for connection, kanji for home, <laughs> because we're sheltering at home. Um, and they had several choices, but um, I asked them to vote on which one they wanted to do. And they decided that they wanted to do the kanji for love. That was the one they, that resonated with them the most. Um, so what I did was I mailed out um, the three by five, the blank three by five cards to the students along with the instructions. Um, and I also enclosed a stamped return envelope so that when they were done with their pieces, 
um, they could just simply put it in the return envelope and mail it back to me. And once I received everybody's pieces, it was just a matter of me putting it together um, on the poster. So if you're interested in doing something like this, um, the instructions that I gave to my students is linked here at the very bottom uh, bullet point. So if, if you, and I'll post the link to our presentation slide again later in case you missed that. Um, but as long as you have the presentation slide, you'll have access to all of this. Um, and so to be honest, um, more than anything else, these, these projects, both, both the, the music video project um, and also the art project, um, really is about connecting with students, right? Building community and really just having fun together. <laughs> that is just so important, especially in distance learning, right? Um, and it can be done. It, it can be done. Like these projects, uh, we did it. Um, and I'd actually been doing um, similar projects like the music video project and this art project even prior to COVID times. So it was just a matter of me realizing that it could still be done, right, under these circumstances. And I just needed to figure out the logistics um, of how to do it. Um, and I feel like if you can connect with students uh, in a meaningful way, in a fun way, then everything else will just fall into place. Um, so just to kind of get some ideas, like maybe like in history class, um, students can create like a world map together, right? Or maybe in science, students can create the periodic table together. I don't know. There's just like so many different ways. I think something like this could be done. So I hope that that um, kind of get some ideas going for get some ideas going for you. Um, here's a we'll share a little clip of the video that shows you how um, this was kind of put together. So um, that was the, um, the project, and I actually have, I have it right here. <laughs> I have the poster here still, you know, unfortunately, right? We don't, I don't have a classroom to like hang this up on and for students to walk in and look at, right, anymore. Um, so I have it at home right here, like <laughs> behind the bookcase. Um, what a shame, right, to not be able to like, I mean, I created this video so it could be shared and the students can share it with like, you know, their friends and family. But um, what I did, what, I, what is, I also took the poster that we made um, and to share with the community, I brought it to a Black Lives Matter protest in Marina over the summer. So that was a way that um, I also took another step further to just not let it just sit here as a poster, but, um, I wanted to take my students' work um, and put it into action for a good cause in our community. I got lots of great comments, so I was really proud of, proud of my students. <laughs> so um, on May 26th, uh, the hard work of our students were celebrated and shared publicly through YouTube Premiere. We invited a few students uh, who had participated in this project, their friends, the Japanese teachers, and especially even Dr. Blanca Fatsavasaba. She um, joined us for the live filming of this uh, event. Um, so when it premiered, we had students, parents, uh, lots of Japanese and other global language teachers from around California, and um, many people even from Japan tuned in. 
And currently, uh, we have almost 600 viewers for this video, and you can still access it too, which means that our students' hard work continues to be shared and inspire those around, um, you know, a wide range of authentic audience. So this impact showcase was truly a wonderful celebration of learning, and here's a few minutes of our so Minako, you know, yeah. I'm noticing the time. We just have a few minutes left. So right. maybe, we, maybe we should skip this. Okay. Yeah. So again, everyone can access the, the video of our um, impact showcase through our presentation. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So please, yeah, please take a peek. Um, it, the whole event is about 40 minutes and it'll be 40 minutes worth of your time. But, you know, if you just wanted to see like a few minutes of it, you'll be able to access it. Yeah, it was just, it was a blast, wasn't it? I, yeah. if, if, no, if, if you haven't tried a YouTube premiere, we highly encourage it. The event was pre-recorded, but it was premiered live. And so it acted like a live video with a live chat and everything with the participants. Um, That's very special. So yes, please check it out. Thank you. All right, Erica. So to wrap up this presentation, um, we covered a variety of events, activities, and projects we've done through our program in order to address the UN Sustainable Development Goals, as well as build our students' global competency. Uh, in our Journey to America unit, students have the opportunity to investigate the world. This is the top left domain. Uh, they learned about Japanese immigration right to the United States, as well as specifically to Salinas. And uh, when we had uh, Mr. Mas Hashimoto come as a guest speaker, it was an opportunity for our students to recognize perspectives. That's the top right domain. They were able to gain a personal perspective that's not available in, in a textbook. And at the same time, um, the students also shared their poetry um, at the same event, which was a way for them to share their own understanding and perspective of the history they learned. Um, but this opportunity sh to share their work obviously overlaps with the bottom right communicate ideas domain. Um, and as you as you recall, Mr. Zama also had his students um, publish their stories in the form of a book, uh, which is also a very impressive and effective way for students to able to communicate their story. Yes, and the Japan trip, again, students investigate at the world, um, learning about Okinawan perspective, perspective on World War II. Um, they learned new ways to look at um, the war and they communicated their pledge to peace through peace ceremony, taking action and um, uh, presenting the paper crane and also bringing back the peace bowl, planting it here in Salinas. For the impact project, um, students continue to investigate the world on topics that they wanted to and they um, learned various perspectives, communicate ideas in a way they wanted to. Um, what's the most best way to make that impact and to take action by publishing their work on the website. So, um, thank you. We hope that our presentation today has given you some good examples on how you can incorporate the UN Sustainable Development Goals and the four domains of global competency into your curriculum to create engaging and relevant learning activities for your students. Um, in particular, connecting with community organizations that could serve as an ally to your program and finding opportunities for students to showcase their work to authentic audiences are all things that we can still continue to do under our new learning environment. So um, we have a couple questions um, yeah. in the digital parking lot um, from Julie. So mm -hmm. uh, this unit 10 fashion, um, is it tied to SDG 12? I believe it was. <laughs> that sounds right. Consumption and production. Money. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> I believe so. Yes, because we talk about um, like in in that unit, we now talk about fast fashion. Like, there's vocabulary like laborers and consumers. These are like you know high advanced words that like we had not incorporated before in our fashion unit, but, but now are. Um, and yeah, they talk about like how the clothes, like fast fashion, they, you know, we overly consume fast fashion and therefore it produces trash and the trash, right, negatively affects our environment, that sort of thing. Um, so yes, I believe it was, yes, SDG number 12. I hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. um, Rob asks, are the SDGs in all units on your curriculum map for all four years or specific years in units? So, you know, um, I'm not sure if 
if so, I understand your question. Like, do yeah. every single unit have a SDG? I think that's what he's asking. Rob, do you want to come on to the microphone? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Wow. Hi. Hi, Rob. How inspiring. Awesome work. Thank and you. Uh, yeah, so the, the question was, I, I put that in initially and I was trying to, you know, like, I was, first of all, the map is great. The curriculum map is awesome and how you have it mapped out all four years. And so when I saw that, I was thinking, well, what is our, did you purposely map an SDG to each of the different 24 units that I saw across all four years? Or was it just for some? Initially, I thought, well, maybe it was like in year one or year two or maybe year three or year four, but it looks like after this conversation, it looks like they're, they, they're sprinkled throughout all four years. Is that correct? Yes, but I think it, we started gradually. We started more like, you know, well, let's try one unit with an SDG this year, and then we continue to add to it. So th that is a work in progress. We're still, you know, uh, refining it. Okay. Um, it's taken years, but uh, the goal is that every single unit has some SDGs. SDG yeah, yeah awesome. and actually, thank you. So to also add to that, Rob, it's not necessarily always an SDG. Um, mm -hmm. Like in our friendship unit, our social issue that we're going, we're, we talk about now is bullying. And that's not necessarily, there's no SDG that says like bullying, you know, issues. And I'm sure we can like find the SDG that might correlate that, that um, encompasses the topic of bullying, but, but that's the social issue. So it, it may be an SDG specifically, or it could be like just a social issue that we, um, felt was important to address in that in that topic, so it won't necessarily match up um, as an SDG. Yeah, good, good. Um, Thank you for that. Yes, for of course. Question. Yes. Okay, I think those well, are just the two questions. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you all for being here, and um, we are really honored that you spent an hour with us. And feel free to reach reach out to us. Please do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Arigato. Arigato gozaimashita. Here's our evaluation link and our contact information. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I meant to post the presentation link again. I forgot to do that. I will do that now in case some people are still here and need that. First, thank you so much. That was amazingly oh, inspiring. Oh, hi, Megan. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, secondly, could you post that link in the chat, please? For some reason, when I try to click on it on the screen, it's not working for me, but in the chat, it works great. Thank you so um, much. The, the link to the presentation? Uh, the presentation, uh, I have that one, but I need the evaluation, oh, the evaluation link. Yes, do you have we it, will do you have it Eric? Um, yes, I can get it right now. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, let's see. Really phenomenal. Thank you. Super, super inspiring. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Yes. What an encouragement. Let me put the link. The eval link is coming right now. That's it. Sorry, still getting used to <laughs> what feels like multitasking with chat and presentation and speaking. It's very difficult, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> multitasking. Yeah. It oh, just... And we can uh, stop recording there. Sure. So, yes. Is it... if, if anyone has any um, additional questions or comments you'd like to share at this point, if, if, if you don't mind that <laughs> we're already at 11.05.